Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today, gonna be a PvT featuring Jayun and Rush here on Overwatch, version 2.1 apparently. Top left, we got ourselves our Protoss player, Jayun. He's orange today. And in the bottom right, we've got Rush. ASL qualifier Rush. And Jayun is an excellent Protoss with a very excellent resume. This is going to be a Patreon game for those of you who support me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin for at least $1 a month. And if you're not seeing this in the month of July, or maybe early, well, early July, right? If you're seeing this in August, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. And this is a proxy. Okay, so proxy opening here from Jayun. I'm here six times a week with Brood War content. Do, 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 do. Wow, I haven't seen a proxy from a Protoss player in a very, very long time. Got this replay from RJB of RJB TV fame. It is from the year 2020, which is not that long ago. And don't go Command Center first, Rush. <laughs> do not do that. <laughs> Oh man, a proxy gateway. Our toast is to be so mad. Okay, good. So <laughs> barracks first after supply depot. Very safe, very standard gas steel. Ooh, that should notify you that there is some kind of a proxy going on here. Jayun would not gas steal unless it would help him in some way, right? Oh. Harassing, trying to make sure the barracks gets built as slowly as possible. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so two racks opening. Very, very smart stuff. He knows what's up. He knows there's a zealot in production somewhere in a gateway moving across the map and is going to kill him. So we'll see how Rush deals with this. I like it. I don't like the gas steal. I don't. I think that the gas steal just gives a little bit too much information as to what's going on here. Like, there's a little bit too much. The warning bells are too strong in Rush's head right now, right? So, yeah. I mean, the Zealot's coming in, but, like, there's Marines on the way. Oh, I love the Supply Depot here, too. So, the uh, the Marine can sit between the two barracks, and the Supply Depot protects him from the backside. And did he scout this? I don't know that he did. There is nothing back home. But here comes Los Zalota. Ooh, the barracks is going to complete. want to see if he does go down, but... Bam. Okay, so now the Marines, their job is to not die. Their job is to get as many shots off on the Zealot and on this probe without dying. Because you can get a lot of shots off, but uh, if you die and this doesn't die first, you're in a lot of trouble. So maybe, I don't know, is this it? You're going to make any? Oh my gosh, you're still making more. Okay, man. I mean, this is oof, this is Bisu level Zealot pressure here in the early game. This is something that we've seen Bisu do to Zerg players and to straight up kill them. Man. So the gas gets killed. He does have access to his Vespine Geyser now. Th not that I'm sure that he wants it. And then back home. Yeah, okay, we're done. Cybernetics Core coming up back home. Gateway coming up back home. Good number of Marines and SCVs here from Rush, too. I'm liking it. Yeah, these two Zealots are going to have a really hard time against six Marines with Zealot support, too. Yeah, look at these SCVs. Is he... What? Is Rush like, you know what? I'm just going to try and kill you. How's that sound? Let's go. Let's go, boys. Let's mark it across this bridge. Ooh, trying to get that one Marine. Beautiful micro here from Rush. Trying to get these Marines. Get one! Okay, 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 that's fine. One Marine down is better than zero down. And this is just... This, bringing this many SCVs, pulling the boys. Uh, this is kind of incredible. This is honestly kind of incredible stuff here from Rush. I like it. The SCVs are really good body blockers. It takes a ton of hits from a Dragoon to kill one for sure. Trying to micro against Marines when you have a Dragoon without range totally sucks. As we can see here... I don't know that trying to take down this gateway is necessarily the best play. Mm, zealot. Ugh. Almost gets another marine kill there. And, oh, the zealots come back from down this direction. Ah! Ah! Jayun! Oh, Jayun! He just completely wipes out this marine count, but reinforcing marines are here. That's beautiful. Okay, reinforcements arrive. I just cast a lower level game for the channel where uh, the Terran player is doing great. Just didn't reinforce his attack at all. And the Protoss player barely held it off, but if he had been reinforcing, he would have won. So that's why 
Protoss players are better than lower level players like me and you. They always reinforce their attacks. Always are macroing back home. We've got a factory coming up back home. Singularity charge is almost done. God, this zealot is just so tanky. Got him. Got him, though. Again, Dragoons do not want to fight against Marines if they don't have the range upgrade. They almost do, but you know... Oh, this is amazing. This is some great one base pressure. Versus a one base defense, one of the Dragoon dies, but that range is very, very close to finishing right now. SCVs. Again, any shot they can get off, any damage they can take that the Marines aren't taking is good. Mmm. Okay. All right. That's a lot of dead SCVs, but it is 21 to 24 workers. Oof. Getting up the ramp. Oh, this bunker needs to finish like now. Holy crap, like right now. Get in the bunker. Oh, get in the bunker, Chinji. Gets it. Oh, gets in the bunker. Okay, that was tight. That was some really tight timing there. Rush started that thing exactly when he needed to, not a second more. On the other side, Jae Yoon says, I need a second base if I'm going to beat a Terran in a macro game. You can beat him with one base if you can beat them in one base quickly. But once they start getting into factory tech, once they start getting some really cost-efficient units out, like Vultures with Spider Mines and Siege Tanks and stuff, then at that stage, you're definitely going to want two bases and probably three bases and then probably a fourth base as well. Yeah, he's got a lot of SCVs here. He's got 27 SCVs on one base, which is way too many. Look at how saturated this is. You never see mineral lines this saturated. Hmm. Robotics facility on the way. Interesting. Again, could this be for observers? I kind of always forget that. I'm like, oh, robotics facility. Reavers it is. No, nah, man, could just be obs. He could just be worried about spider mines, which is a fair thing to be worried about. It is going to be siege mode because he needs to knock these dragoons off of here so we can actually take a second base. That'd be real cool. Nice Maynard transfer down here to the natural from our guy Jayoon. Yeah, not many Jayoon games in the replay pack. So not, I've never really been able to find an entire replay pack and nothing but Jayoon. Which, if I cast a lot of a certain player, it's because I have a whole replay pack for them and it's massive. <laughs> so, yeah, that's not what Jayoon is. I find him playing other players in other replay packs centered around a different person. Sometimes I find them in just, you know, large replay packs that are like, these are just cool replays. There's like 40 replays I really enjoyed, and Jayun's in there a few times. That's about it. But second base gonna go ahead and land. Tanks almost have siege. The dragoons have been pushed out a little bit. I like this, this is interesting. Are you gonna throw down a, uh, this a pylon? Are you gonna make a pylon? There's one up here. I know you're capable of throwing down proxy pylons. That's another one there too. Dragoon holding the bridge. You've been tasked with holding the bridge. All by yourself. Good luck. Oh, third base. I love it. Third base from Jayon. He knows what's up. He knows what's up. He knows how to play this matchup. Second factory is now on the way from Rush. Rush, Rush, Rush. Getting Caron boosters. I want to say a little bit early, but if he's worried about getting Reaver dropped, which is a viable tech path that we could see here from Jayon soon, then yeah. Having range on your Goliaths is awesome, but. For now, it's just OBS, right? Got our observatory up here on the left side. Beautiful third base defended by virtually nothing right now. But additionally, the Terran is kind of stuck at home. The Terran is not in a great position to move out. The Terran can defend, which is Terran's speciality, especially in this matchup, is defending a base. Protoss trying to break a well-defended Terran base. Just, they just really struggle. They got to catch them out in the middle of the map, right? So yeah, this is where, okay. Jayun says, you can have two bases. Giving you three bases, I'm not super into. Not what I want to do at all. So tell you what, you can have two bases. I'm not going to march in here and try to do anything because tanks on the high ground and tanks on the low ground is bad news for me. Observer sees everything that's happening here, though. And so far, pretty chill. It's 48 to 39 workers. Third base getting Maynard transferred to as well. It's not officially a Maynard, I don't think. If you're transferring to a third, it's just to the natural, I believe. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how many people listening to this will believe me, but I'm telling you, the concept of building a second base and then sending down five, six, seven workers from your main to instantly start mining at the second base was not something that we knew how to do in 1998. It just wasn't. None of us knew how to do it. Maynard had to teach us the way. That's the fun thing about being part of a game early on is all the discovery that happens, right? Like I'm playing a lot of Elden Ring right now, which came out in like February, so it's fairly new. But one of the things the players has discovered is there a place. There is a place that's a little bit difficult to get to, and you do have to do a couple quests to unlock this area. But once you're there, you can stand on a cliff and shoot a bird. 
like a big boss bird. Like it's an Elden Ring bird, right? So it's not like a pigeon. It's like a giant crow. It will try to attack you and run off a cliff and die. <laughs> it gives you a ton of runes, which is the currency in Elden Ring, if you've never played a Dark Souls game. It's a ton of runes, so it's a bird farming spot, basically. But someone figured that out. Somebody got to that area and was like, hmm, that giant bird down there looks interesting. But if you attack it from the wrong location, it doesn't run off the cliff. Like, it's a very specific spot. You have to shoot it from up high where you on your perch. Haha, <laughs> perch, giant bird. And then it will run off a cliff and die. And then, but ah, you get it. You get a ton of, a ton of runes. Carriers are happening! Anyway, that's just fun stuff that you find when you come into a game early. And someone's all over the forums about it. Okay, so yeah. You could do carriers off a of two base. It's not super well recommended, but yeah. This full wall off here with pylons to get that third gas as fast as possible was an indication. This won't be dumb carriers. So, Jayun carrier play here on Overwatch as part of the Patreon game of the week. That's going to be good. Oh, this is going to be really good. Oh, but see, third base, three base Terran. Scary. Scary. Oh, I don't know about coming in here. Okay, so that shuttle's dead. Yep, fair enough. Are there enough dragoons to just crush this? Um, yeah, it looks like there are. Jayun thinks there are because he's not going home. If there aren't enough dragoons to crush it, then the Terran player stays and the Protoss leaves. But mm, hi these two high ground tanks. Okay, all right then. Wow, yeah, sticking around to try to take down that barracks was definitely a mistake. I don't think he was even freeing up supply to make carriers or anything. He doesn't have the money to make a ton of carriers right now anyway. I, I'd be worried about a tank push out here. If you lose every one of your Dragoons, that emboldens the Terran to make an attack across the map and try to just kill you. Which, there's nothing else back here. All the money, well, some of the money's going to Dragoons now. But it's carriers and it's Dragoons being produced. Is this was more of a hybrid play out of Jayun. We have seen some good success with Protoss players going hybrid, carrier, dragoon, zealot, high templar. Right? High templar is a little hard to afford if you're also going carriers, but whatever. Dragoons and zealots and carriers working together. It's good. Other Protoss just like the pure carrier aspect of the thing, especially in a map where they got some high ground they can abuse. Right here's some high ground. Right here's some high ground. I uh, feel like Rush has figured this out. He's making a lot of Goliaths right now. Also making a tank, and that's the thing. If your opponent's going hybrid ground and air, then you have to go hybrid ground attack and air attack yourself. So it needs to be a good number of tanks and vultures with spider mines, but also enough goliaths to kill the carriers. Because if you don't get that, then the carriers wipe out all of your tanks. It's tricky. It's very tricky for both players to balance exactly what they want to do here. But I feel like the onus on figuring out the optimal thing for them is going to be Rush as the Terran player. So the carriers have arrived... What's the response here? Not so much. He's still just making... Yeah. He's still just making Goliaths, as you want to do. Yeah, there aren't enough Interceptors to really do a ton. So the Carriers are backing out. Two more Carriers on the way, but also eight Zealots at a time. Okay, so this is Jayun definitely doing the old... Let's make some Gateway units here, in addition to the handful of Carriers I'm going to make. But he is... Tossing up another Stargate here. Another base would be pretty good. I like the Vulture checking this top right to make sure that doesn't happen. And this Vulture, too, checking this uh, this left side 9 o'clock to make sure it doesn't happen either. Good. It's pretty good vision, honestly. This Observer has great vision, too, <laughs> for Jayun. All right. Dragoons moving out with an Observer. They don't have any upgrades. That might be a tell, too. If your enemies gateway units have no upgrades at all at 14 minutes maybe they're putting those upgrade resources into carriers instead something to think about dragoon comes to escort the probe on up here and make sure the fourth base is clear to build and it is now thanks to the dragoon's heroics and you can take a fourth there enough you had enough money which you don't yeah carriers their goal here is to not take direct body shots from the goliaths you know that you clicked on this because you know how this works you saw carriers, and you're like, okay, let's see how Jayun's carrier control is. If it's good enough, it looks unstoppable. If it's a little bit sloppy, and you're taking body shots every once in a while, or you're taking a ton of body shots, you're just having a bad time. That carrier's down to, my gosh, about 30 HP here, with the shields coming up, though, mind you. With those shields. Templar Archives is on the way. Loving that. 
Get some of that storm out. Maybe some Archons. I don't know. Whatever you're into. Yeah, just, this is kind of like light carrier harass. This isn't... This is like Mutalisk harass a little bit. Except attacking the Mutalisks themselves is a lot easier than attacking the bodies of these carriers. <laughs> and they don't take any hits and they just get the heck on out of there. So yeah, pr that's a good scan. He's like, okay, so this is a ton of Zealot Dragoon, but they don't have any upgrades at all. Meanwhile, I've got plus two attack and plus one armor. So tell you what, let's go. Let's get on in here. Let's, let's see what we can do. And the answer is, I don't know, man. Zealots on top of your Goliaths is a pretty bad spot to be. Okay, good stutter step from the Goliaths, though. Trying to oh, keeping them alive a little bit more effectively. Then you might think the tanks are just kind of allowed to sit back here and fire away on these Dragoons. At least until they get completely overrun. <laughs> But guess what we were talking about earlier? The reinforcements! And reinforcements coming from the north, too. But the reinforcements for Russia are really important right now. As this tank yeah, gets blasted. Just completely exploded and gone. Spider mines? Do you want to come in here? we got some spider mines. Are you going to send the dragoons in first? Arya, Arya, no. Says Jay, I don't want to go over a narrow ramp against siege tanks and spider mines and vultures. Absolutely not. Third base, a little vulnerable here. Sneaking down this way, not a terrible idea, but man, Jayun four bases and Rush's on three bases. I think Rush is okay. He's got more workers. He's got a ton of factories. He's running, again, better upgrades than the Protoss is. He's finally got plus one for his gateway units. The carriers have plus two. Yeah, I mean, this is plus two with a plus three attack soon to be on the way for these mech units. Gonna march down to the third base and try to wipe it out. Uh, getting stuck on his own ramp here is never... Never a good thing at all. Zealots getting on top of these SCVs. Remember when Rush had a worker count advantage? Not really. For how much longer is that going to be the case as the Zealots come in? Oh, got enough. Got enough by way of vultures to chase them out. And Jayun just does pull back. Is this still a little bit scrappy? Although it is 172 to 121 supply all of a sudden. Archons, Dragoons are being produced like crazy. I think Jayun's just made some really good trades here today. He's killed a lot of tanks. I'm not sure he's lost a carrier yet. He's, yeah, he's got six carriers. One of them's very close to death. But he's not dead yet. No, he's not dead yet. <clears throat> Trying to again just harass him here at the third base. If you go to the third base of the Terran, you pretty much just win the game. Oh, body shots here, though. Oh, carrier down. He didn't even focus the one that was super injured. Dude, focus the bodies. Can you not see them from here? Uh, Shine's watching this. Stork watching this. Light is watching this. Or Last is watching this. Lucifer Morning is a, is a smurf name of either Light or Last. Either way. Yeah, man. I think Jayun's in well control here. Did he hold on? Well, did he not kill the third base? Correct. He did not. Has he really taken a bunch of expansions himself? No. Did a ton of vultures just wander into the fourth base and wipe out all of the probes? Absolutely. That's exactly what happened. 41 to 64 workers now, dude, I think. He's got to go now. Jayun's like, all right, cool. We must make a move in now and try to kill the Terran because our economy is not super great. And the upgrades are not super great. But if you just have enough stuff, you can do this thing. Plus three attack on these tanks and these Goliaths and these Vultures. But there's more Protoss on the ground and in the skies. Down to three carriers now. Three of them have been killed. Of the six, just reinforcements... Continually trying to pump on in here. It's going to be Goliath. It's going to be tanks. I don't know if this third base can survive the onslaught, though. And sure, did Jayun just completely lose his fourth base to vultures? Yes, but is Rush losing his third? Also, yes. 49 to 40 workers. It would be an advantage for Jayun, except for the attack on his fourth. Yeah, Rush is okay. Now he's down to 42 SCVs, and the third command center is going to die. We're going to try some Vulture Spider Mine harassment at places, but this hard wall at the third base has really kept it Vulture free since 1962. Or, you know, since the like four minute mark of this game. Yeah, down 50 supply. I mean, again, you are more cost efficient as a Terran. Is it enough cost efficient to win this game? I don't know. I don't know. Jayun's probably the better player here. All right, Vulture's doing some work up at the front. There's only a couple Dragoons, and the Vultures are like, we have good upgrades. How about we just kill all of your stuff with Vultures, but then more Dragoons come down the ramp. Mm, is he going to force this army back home? Oh, I don't know that you need to do that. I think the responding Dragoons were enough. I'm not sure that repositioning your army was really necessary there at all, but you know, 
Better safe than sorry. When you're up 50 supply, maybe you can afford to do something like that that would be more damaging. And Rush just taps out. GG! Rushes down 50 supply, recognizes, okay, fine. Man, held off that zealot attack, that early proxy so well, and then the hybrid carrier dragoon stuff. Again, with plus one for the gateway units, and that's it. Plus two attack for the carriers, sure. But he just had significantly better upgrades, which don't show not the end of the game, but it was 3-2. It was 3-2 for the mech, and maybe even 3-3 was done. I wasn't watching it that closely, but dang. Jayoon loses the fourth base, wins the game anyway. Absolute boss style. Boss style. Gets the third base up, gets the third gas, moves into carriers, keeps making Dragoons, keeps making Zealots. Got some Archons in here, too. Not sure that they really mattered. And then, yeah, just mash the third base into Oblivion for the Terran. They will be disheartened, and they will leave. <sighs> Yeah, that was probably fair. I mean, look, normally a two-basing Terran versus a three-basing Protoss is going to be all right. But just such big trades have been made today in favor of the Protoss that the army value is just so big, right? If the army value is, you know, a little bit bigger for the Protoss and a little bit smaller for the Terran, the cost of uh, the cost effectiveness really comes into play, especially with the upgrades. But, I mean, at the end of the game there, I guess we should... I'm going to take a quick look and see what his army was. Hit that like button, by the way, if you enjoyed this game. It was a nice little exhibition of how Protoss can play PVT and make it work for them. I know a lot of you struggle with this matchup. I know a lot of Terrans who, uh, Protoss who hate playing against Terran. Yeah, so this is all happening. And then the Vultures are attacking at the front. He just, yeah, he just keeps losing Dragoons wandering into, or Dragoons. Vultures run, wandering into Dragoon fire. He has he just mined out of his main. His natural base is... I mean, he's got 42 SCVs at it, so that's not great. The Vulture's back out, and I think that was your GG timing. Right about there. Yeah, interestingly enough, it was. I guess he saw additional carriers coming out and was like, I don't... Yeah, okay. He had like six Goliaths and three Siege Tanks. It's just too much. Too much Dragoons alone, honestly, to win that thing. Yeah, reasonable, reasonable GG. I have declared it thus, and Jayoon is your winner in 20 minutes and 3 seconds. 137,000 points for the Protoss, 112 for the Terran. Did get outproduced by the Terran, but outkilled 187 and 164. That's what I'm talking about. Just was the more cost-efficient one, killing more stuff here today. Structures raised, 7 to 6, which is a little bit interesting. Don't see that a lot in these matchups. And then outspent the Terran by about 5,000 resources in total, which, yeah, fast third base... Killed the enemy third base, got a fourth base for a while, even if he lost that, it wasn't the end of the day. So GG, absolutely GG. That was very, very well executed by Jayoon, made it look just casual. If that's fair to say, it is fair to say. <laughs> anyway, pretty good PVT for today. That was a good Patreon game, and that's going to be it for me. This is going to be Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of Sarka Prudor Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw, what you heard today. Woo, you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.